Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Jack Tompkins, who's the founder of Pineapple Consulting. Jack, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Mike. This is great. I'm excited. Yeah, me too, and I want to learn all about what you do. But first of all, start us off with why pineapple? Because there's always a story behind, uh, you know, uh, CDL con, uh, consulting. Oh, well, that's my initials. Okay, well, good. Why pineapple? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's funny because I didn't want to be like Jack Tompkins and Associates or anything like yep. that. But I did uh, – so I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I moved down here from Connecticut. But uh, southern hospitality is very much a thing. And so pineapple symbolize hospitality, especially in the south. So I wanted to fully embrace that. Um, but they also represent vacation to me. So my goal was to get a small business owner, save them enough uh, time or make them enough money so that they can take an actual vacation, go sit on a beach and drink a pina colada out of a pineapple kind of thing. So all kind of came together into the pineapple. So many nuances of pineapple all related to the feeling. I mean, let's think about something here. Uh, what you just described there is the feeling that you want to provide to your clients. And and a lot of times people, you know, want that transformation. And, you know, Maya Angelou says people will forget what you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. So neat, neat uh, um, two uh, concepts that way, which is really interesting because I know that your consulting focuses on data and making data-driven decisions. So that kind of takes the feeling out of making decisions. So that's a really uh, wonderful way to, to go, look, we could talk about that boring data stuff, but let's bring it to life. Right. That's exactly right. It's it's two very contradicting ideas because nobody thinks data and gets relaxed. So. Yep, <laughs> for sure. So, so then what made you think one day, data is my thing? Yeah, I you know I I just really like it. I've always liked numbers. Um, when I was at, in high school, my teacher was out for a week, and we had a sub who was not a math person at all. So I taught the class for a week, and <laughs> I I just absolutely loved it. I loved helping people understand the numbers and use them in real life. And I went from you know a high school class to now obviously working with businesses and stuff. And it's such a blast to me. And I like making it visual, so it doesn't feel like data. And it's it's just been a passion of mine, and some of that um, has been luckily a skill set of mine too. And it's it's just always been really fun uh, helping people understand numbers. Yeah, and so um, it's not just the numbers because that's you know what an accountant would do. Here's your numbers. Let's fill in the blanks to this worksheet. But it's being data driven, and and knowing what the numbers mean and then knowing what to do with the numbers, right? So talk a little bit about what being data-driven for a small business means and kind of where you start. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point because, again, kind of reiterating because it is worth reiterating. The numbers are the numbers, and you can look at them with a blank stare and nothing could come of it. Doing something with them is where the data-driven comes, and that's where you build a strategy. So what does it look like for small businesses? Great question. Um more often than not, we're not dealing with millions and billions of dollars, right? Um, we're more thinking, okay, well, I have a thousand hits on my website. What did they do, right? So yeah. the whole thing is focus on a few different metrics that you probably already kind of know, and it could be as simple as revenues or for real small businesses, one-on-ones or uh, hits on your website or whatever it is, conversions. Focus on those few things and then see, okay, now that I had 10 conversions, all right, well, your brain is going to naturally kind of jump to the next step. Well, where did those conversions come from? Oh, they all came from this Facebook post I did. Well, maybe I should do more of those Facebook posts then. So data-driven for small business is really what has worked and how can we do more of it? And then what hasn't worked, and let's maybe sub that out or refine it or build a more effective strategy um, around it. And wouldn't that also play into um, 
let's say that a small business is doing Google pay-per-click or Facebook ads, and you look at that data and go, who, um, it's working okay, but we can maximize it because, or we, I, I noticed that, you know, most of the clicks are coming from this, which is resulting in that, and let's take uh, our money that's going into the other keywords or the other uh, segments, and which aren't performing well, and let's divert that into what is performing well, all within the realm of our paid ad campaign. That that's uh, a lot different than oh, you had this many visitors on a website. We gotta we gotta maximize our ad spend too, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean the the big word is kind of maximizing efficiency and maximizing ROI. Um, but in reality, that's exactly it. It's hey, this one's working really well. Let's do more of it. Let's put more money into this. This ad isn't working, or this service isn't uh, efficient enough. It's taking me too much time. So maybe I should raise the rate or change the service. Or it's those little adjustments that in small business uh, is great because you're agile and you can make those adjustments and you can make them work the very next day, right? So it's there's there's a lot of different things and whatever matters most to your business, and any listener will know that more than we do, but whatever matters most, you can kind of correct that and change course quickly based on the numbers and based on um, kind of what you're seeing and the impact to your business. You know, when you say small adjustments, it made me think of something that happened literally today or yesterday. I teach a marketing strategy for a few universities, and one school that I teach for, Grand Canyon University, we were talking about marketing research and the data in that. And it's like, do you want to use primary data? Do you want to use secondary data? And what if the data you access is not as accurate as it could be or should be. Well, if you don't know that, you get just a little bit off course and then you keep using that and then now it's kind of like when you uh, jump into an airplane and you're just, you know, just a small percent off course, doesn't feel like a big diversion, but over time you're going to land in a whole different state than what you intended. So talk a little bit about making sure that you're looking at the right numbers, even if it seems close enough. Well, close enough can be really detrimental over time. Right. And it's such a good analogy, too, because 1% over 365 days ends up being a pretty big number. Right? Yeah. So that's a great, great analogy. Um, but it's a garbage in, garbage out situation, right? So make sure the numbers are good and make sure the numbers are right and that there's a lot of processes around that. Make sure that they're flowing in correctly and do some quality checking. Uh, most of my time, I shouldn't say most, a lot of my time is spent quality checking numbers to make sure that they're right, make sure they're actionable, um, and make sure that they're uh, continuing to flow in correctly. So that is a, that's an area that can't be overstated because if you are 1% off, yeah, it's going to matter over time. And there's some things that you can ballpark and that's okay. But at the end of the day, if you're really making data driven decisions in order to make that, the data has to be right. So that, yeah. that is a huge, huge piece that needs to be quality checked as much as possible. And, and not just one time. You know, I mean, you think about, um, you know, well, let's do our annual review or let's do our quarterly review. Depending on the data, it, it might need to be checked daily. It might need to be checked weekly. So you, you got to keep that finger to the f pulse of whatever you're checking on. And there's dozens of categories that need to be checked. So, you know, we can go to town on, on all of that. But I think the big takeaway here is no numbers. I mean, we, we all watch Shark Tank, hopefully, and, you know, it's like, know your numbers, know your numbers. Don't come into Shark Tank without knowing your numbers. Well, don't just know them one time and go, oh, yeah, two years ago we did this. Well, how about two days ago? Right. Right, exactly. And that's I'll, I'll even add on to that. I, I'm about as data-driven as you're going to get for a small business owner, but it's not like I avoid my gut instinct either. So yeah. When you're checking those numbers, does your gut tell you that they're right? Because you're going to know your business inside and out. And if something looks fishy, it's probably a bit fishy. Yeah. So use the gut instinct. I mean, use the numbers too, but mesh them together, and that's that's the best option. That's kind of I, I say something similar to that a lot of times where you talk to an owner or CEO and it's like, look, I'm going to show you this marketing strategy that we built out, and and I'm just going to give you the thirty thousand foot view. Just see it enough to understand the concept, but don't get in the weeds and worry that you need to do it because I'm going to record this session. And you're going to send this over to your assistant, your marketing person. They're going to implement it, but the CEO, the owner, needs to 
know the concept. Well, just like what you just said, you know, you need to understand the concept of the numbers, but maybe getting into the weeds, yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to extract it out and I'm not going to go into the analytics and the Excel files, but the owner needs to realize, hey, something just seems off. Let's dig in deeper here. And maybe you bring in someone to go, something just doesn't seem right here. Let's figure it out. But if you're oblivious to that, now you don't even know if there's a clue or an indicator up front. Right, exactly. It, it's a very common situation with my clients too, where uh, I'll you know put something out there and say, "Hey, like this all is flowing correctly to me. The numbers, you know, two plus two is two equals four. But these numbers make sense because that's the big question. Yeah, and that's you can dive in at very very different levels depending on where you are or in the organization. But it's a it's a great point of whatever level you're at. Just make sure that they make sense. And you know what? How about this? This is something I mention a lot of times, too. I forget where I first learned it. I want to say, like, the lean startup, but um, vanity metrics. You know, oh, data and metrics and numbers and look at all these whatever, whatever category. And the one that I like to use a lot is, wow, we got X number of visits to our website, Yahoo!, but if it doesn't result in anything, that's just a vanity metric. So there's certain, you know, points, metric points that are, like, critical and then there's certain that a lot of Tim's people hang their hat on but does it really matter right <laughs> it's such a good point because there's so many metrics out there and mm -hmm. I, I was asked this question the other day of uh, and I forget the exact thing but it was hey like what's your you know sessions per page on this yeah. given on like a Tuesday I was like I have no idea but you're a data person shouldn't you know that no because yeah. I know the right numbers that matter yeah so, Analysis paralysis, right? It happens yeah. all the time, and vanity metrics are the biggest culprit of that. So, yeah, feels good to say this or that metric and look at this, but then when the dust settles, ugh, whatever, you know. Oh, we made a million dollars in revenue last year. Woo, that's awesome. But we spent one point four in expenses, so that's not so awesome. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> there's a metric. For, there's some data for you. Um, okay, so how about this? I would venture to say that you are meeting with a client from time to time that you start showing them metrics and data, and they're making decisions based on data without even realizing it. What are some of those examples? Oh, absolutely. Because they might go, oh, I'm not a data person. Well, you're doing this, and that's based on data. And like, oh, I guess I kind of am a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that I do, and I do some speaking to, and a lot of times it's the solopreneurs and, and folks, uh, you know, five-person business and stuff like that. And data is this big, scary word, right? It's always a little bit daunting, but I guarantee whether you are the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or a solopreneur, you're more data-driven than you expect. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a client who uh, uh, she's an architect and phenomenal business, but not a numbers person, not a financial person. And so we're putting together this dashboard, and uh, we had some project metrics, so think like project management, um, percent to budget, and stuff like that, and all these financial metrics too, but we started with uh, gross profit. I was like, all right, you know, here's what gross profit means and blah, blah, blah. It looks like, and I'm going to make up the number, but it looks like you're around 70% on average. She goes, oh man, like, duh, of course I know that, Jack. <laughs> and huh. I was like, oh, so, so you get it. Like, this is something that you actually do know day in, day out, and you know what a bad number is, you know what a good number is, and this is how it flows to everything else. And it's it's kind of funny having that light bulb go off of, yeah. oh, of course this, but I always focus on this next layer that's like three metrics deeper. So it's it's always a fun conversation. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so how about this? When I hear data and numbers and metrics and I'm like, Ugh, that just feels like I'm staring at Excel files and how boring can you get there? But I know you focus on a lot of visualizing data and seeing you know, kind of at a glance or or dashboards. Talk a little bit about how you present the data or set it up so that a business owner can kind of quickly, easily see it and get it. Yes, my favorite part, data visualization, uh, when it stops feeling like data, because you're exactly right. Boring, endless rows of columns and black and white numbers in Excel, nobody wants to look at that. Nobody can gain any insight from that, not even somebody who loves Excel like I do. So dashboards are everything, right? Think KPIs at the top, some trend graphs in there, in your brand colors, you've got some indicators of your performance, you've got some breakdowns, the pie charts. It starts feeling a lot less like data and more of just an interactive view of your performance. So, and I could go for hours and hours on the benefits of visualizing data, but one piece I would say 
is, uh, depending on which research you look at, text is processed, or sorry, visuals are processed up to 60,000 times faster than yeah. text. Yep. So you just get you're it. Just doing a qu- exactly. You're doing a quick yep. glance, you go boom, boom, done. And honestly, a lot of my clients look at a dashboard for less than five minutes and yeah. know 100% of what they need to know. Yeah, let me see some greens and reds, or let me see some ups and downs, or some arrows going up. Good, that looks like we're on track. You know, from a marketing standpoint, totally uh, uh, aside from uh, the, the point of the conversation, you know, using pineapple, you know, pie charts and bar charts, you could have some fun with like, hey, let's make a pineapple pie, and let's make some, uh, you go to the pineapple bar, and, and really visu- show the visualization and tie it back into the brand that way, make it fun, because, you know, maybe crazy, thought maybe data can be a little bit fun you know especially when everything is dialed in and you know what to tweak and you know if you see something go down then ooh, where what does that mean i should do if this is going down on uh you know a week or a month or, or a quarter over a quarter, then what do I do? Oh well then then if that happens you should go and look here to tweak these areas. Right. Exactly. And that initial visual of that red down arrow or the red number or whatever it is that kind of sets the pace. Because if you go green, 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 okay, everything's good except for this one thing. Yeah. So let's dive a little bit deeper into that. And I, I think the visuals are a lot of fun, to your point, with the pineapple pie and stuff. And I had a client who uh, was more of a personal goal but wanted to get a boat. So we had kind of like, you know, like a fundraising goal, and they have the thermometer fill up. Yeah. We had essentially just an, a bar chart that was filled up with water until it reached the boat at the top kind of thing. Oh, nice. You can have so much fun with it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, So let's wrap up with this. Where can business owners start? If they feel like, yeah, I kind of got numbers, but I don't really have a grasp on them. Where would they start with um, for for starters, you know, without diving into like these, you know, really sub niche of these metrics? What's the first place that you work with your clients on to begin with? Yeah, it's a good question because whatever level you're at, whether you're starting or getting to the next level, it is always a bit daunting. But the big thing is just what is that one thing that kind of sets the tone for your business? And that could be, again, if you're getting just to the next level of being data-driven, what is that next thing? So what's that first domino to fall? Um, and I'll use an example of a client uh, who's trucking industry, can, you know, very simple business model, person drives truck, delivers package, goes on to the next stop, right? So his one big thing is how many stops did I make that day? Uh-huh. If he knows how many stops, he knows how many packages. Then he was X amount of hours it took, and he's so and so efficient, and it just kind of sets the tone for everything else. So yeah. wherever you are, pick that one thing that you probably think about day in day out. Throw some tracking on it. Make sure it's right. Ideally, visualize it too. But just pick that one thing, and everything else will kind of fall into place. And then build from there. You know, you got to crawl and then walk and then jog and run. So you just kind of start there and see where you can kind of enhance and polish up. So if anyone is listening to this going, well, hey, Jack, maybe data can be fun. Maybe, possibly. Show me the way. Um, where where can they reach out and connect with you and learn more? I will do my best to make data as fun as possible. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my website is probably the best place. So it is Pineapple CF, as in Pineapple Consulting Firm. Uh, dot com. I've got examples, videos, fun pictures of pineapples. Hell, I've got pineapple facts on there too. So uh, it it is fun, and I try and make it fun on the site. Awesome. Well, Jack, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Thanks so much, Mike. This is a blast. Really good conversation. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.